Greetings, automotive enthusiast. We have an epic episode of Tales from the Trip for you today. It's ambitious and adventurous. <laughs> so what I'm doing today is taking and delivering a car to a customer in Dallas. And I'm going to leave a little bit early this morning. You can see the sun's still not up. And, uh, and then I'm also going to uh, meet that customer. And then on the way back, stop at another uh, really special place. This gentleman, he restores 240Zs and he is a collector and a nut of unusual stuff, just like me. And he actually had a car that I was just bidding on and trying to buy on Thursday or Friday. And I was really, really wanting to buy this car so I could deliver uh, the one car and pick this one up on the way back. I went $4,000 over my personal reserve to get this car. I really, really wanted it. and uh, But to no avail, I had to give in eventually. This curse, this other person that was bidding on it would not stop. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Uh, but I'm going to stop anyway. I've never met him. I've talked to him quite a bit. So on the way back from Dallas, we're going to stop in uh, Oklahoma. So it's going to be an, a fun day, uh, but all of this in one day. So that's like six hours there, several hours of whatever, six hours back. It's going to be a big day. So let's go ahead. Becky's out of town. So I've got to feed the animals. <laughs> They're hungry or going to be hungry. Um, so let's go ahead and feed them and then hit the road. All right. The horses are still asleep. <laughs> hey, you guys wake up. I know it's before your usual breakfast time but i gotta hit the road let's go let's go get some food well here comes grandma hi bailey good morning are you hungry grandma is our babysitter she's about 26 years old and actually becky's one of becky's first horses when we came to town all right we'll feed grandma first here She's patiently waiting by her bucket. Are you patiently waiting? Huh? It's like, drop it, Papa, drop it. Drop it. Drop it like it's hot. There you go, girl. Love our grain. Now let's get the other two girls. All right, we got, uh-oh, shenanigans. We got Romy. Romy, go to your, go to your bucket, Romy. Romy, come on. Go to your bucket, Zoe. How you doing? Good morning, Zoe. Good morning, girl. Good morning. Go to your bucket, Romy. Come on. You guys know the routine. You know the routine. <sighs> See if they can figure it out. See if you guys can figure it out. Come on, Rome. Come on, Romy. You know where you eat. Come on. There's my good girl. There's my good girl. There's your breakfast. Yes. And she's over at her bucket saying, where's mine? Where's mine? Oh, only got one hand here. Because we're showing you guys. Well, hello. You got a kiss for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good girl. Come on. Let's go. Come on. There you go, girl. And breakfast is served. All right, well, I am hungry, so I'm gonna hit the road and grab some McDonald's. <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll probably have to get a Coke this morning. But look at this beautiful morning. So you ready to ride along? Let's go. All right, we're on the road. I just turned on the radio and I can't believe this. Uh, they're rebroadcasting Casey Kasem 1985, some month in 1985, uh, Top 40 or some week, uh, the Top 40, and they're playing 1985 Top 40 on uh, on our local radio station. How cool is that? Oh, and the uh, it's so ironic because the car we're delivering is a 1985 Mercedes. 500 SEL Euro. Yes, the white 85 Euro 500 SEL. And uh, we're delivering that car to Dallas this morning. 
and uh, uh, it's going to be a fun day. The sun is just coming up, and uh, I actually, I really enjoy driving, and I enjoy these adventures just personally, and I hope you guys enjoy riding along with me, but uh, just left the house. It's 8 o'clock, and uh, my goal was to be on the road headed to Dallas no later than 9, so I'm kind of on target, maybe even just a little ahead of schedule. That's always good. And uh, we'll, uh, I'm headed to shift right now. I was down there late last night cleaning on the 500. I didn't want to take the 500 home because, you know, we see we live on a dirt road. So uh, I couldn't, uh, there's no way I could start because with the SUV pulling the trailer, it's just going to cloud it with dirt. No way I could do that. So I cleaned the uh, 500 SEL at shift last night. I was actually there for several hours, just, I don't know, maybe I was spending my last moments with the car. I even got out my Never Dole and was polishing some of the wax off the chrome and polishing some of the trim. And uh, I was down there late last night till probably 10.30. And, uh, and then uh, the Q7, uh, we recently got it and we've been so busy, I haven't even washed it since we got it. So it was filthy dirty and I'm like, there's no way. I hate traveling or starting a travel, uh, any kind of travel in a dirty car. So after I cleaned the Mercedes, I cleaned the <laughs> the Q7. So uh, got both of them cleaned up last night and they look fantastic. So always uh, makes it for a fun trip. So headed to shift, we'll get the 500 strapped down on the trailer. Um, luckily there's a McDonald's right by shift. So I think I'll just uh, grab some breakfast there and start heading south. Dallas so join us let's go well there she is just pulled her out get her ready to load but something actually when I was down here cleaning last night something I was thinking about is this car came out in the US in 1981 this car came out in the US in 1981 so this is American version of you know top shelf um it's the 19 this one's a 1983 they made it from 81 to 83 imperial and uh, with uh, 34,000 miles on it and you know this is the 85 500 sel but it's just really interesting to see the two manufacturers and two countries design design philosophies um you know <clears throat> this car was expensive this car was about fifty one thousand dollars that car was about $21,000. So the Mercedes was was very expensive. Um, but it's just interesting looking at the two. They're both white, they both have navy interior, and uh, but I just love to see the different design philosophy and styling. They both have a you know small block V8 in them. This one's five liter, this one's a 318. Uh, both fuel injected. <laughs> Funny story behind the Imperial fuel injection. But uh, you know, driving these cars is really interesting. Um, you know, they drive quite a bit different, uh, but like the interior, honestly, the interior on the Imperial, um, you know, the leather, the seating, uh, the appointments are, you know, really a lot nicer than the Mercedes. Mercedes have always been a little bit understated and, uh, you know, with the, the seating, but it's just interesting to see these two together. It'd be fun to have them two just really totally side by side and do a, uh, you know, review between the two, but but just as I'm loading and I thought, saw that, I thought, ah, it'd be fun to show them, show them on camera together. Two um, cars of the contemporaries of the same era, you know, in the same, same color. Which one would you choose? Uh, what's interesting is the values today are really not that far off. The Imperial uh, and the Mercedes are, are fairly close in values. So kind of interesting how that plays out. You would think that it uh, that wouldn't be the case but i love both of them for what they are uh let me know what you guys think let's get this mercedes loaded all right it's nine o'clock on the button let this adventure begin got my <laughs> my breakfast so here we go all right well i'm eating mcdonald's on the road i like mcdonald's for breakfast they got pretty good breakfast i don't do much McDonald's otherwise, but their egg McMuffin, what I like about it is, you know, it's, you know you're getting a real egg, as everything else that's scrambled is pretty much fake. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna really miss where uh, I still got my station. And it's, uh, Casey Kasem, it's October 19th, 
1985, that uh, top 40 week. So, uh, man, I'm going to miss uh, losing this station here soon. But rolling down the road. So it's a maiden voyage for this Q7. Uh, so far, so good. It's smooth. I haven't actually towed with this yet. So kind of interesting to see how this one compares to the black one. Um, this one is the Prestige. It's got a lot more features. This one has the full, for better or worse, the full air pneumatic suspension. So but what's cool about it, it has different ride and comfort mode. You can go comfort, you can go dynamic, automatic, and stuff like that. But one thing as I was noticing scrolling through the menu, it actually has a tow mode as well. So uh, I went ahead and put it in automatic and tow mode and, uh, and see. Uh, new, new tires on the Q7, new tires on the trailer. Uh, man, super quiet, super smooth. Best, man, best tow vehicle uh, ever. Um, so uh, I, I am uh, taking a little bit of a gamble here. Since I bought it, I've smelled a small coolant leak. I think one of the hoses or something, probably one of the small hoses or somewhere. Uh, so I've been driving this thing around for several weeks. And of course, last night, just when I was getting ready to load, uh, drive it home, uh, the uh, coolant level light came on. So uh, I had O'Reilly's bring me some, uh, I brought one gallon of 50-50 and one gallon of full strength. And uh, we're just gonna send it. <laughs> Uh, you know, I guess I gotta add, can't be uh, too uh, trouble free. I gotta add some kind of suspense or drama. So, <laughs> so stay tuned. Hopefully, I mean, I've been driving it. I it, the leak hasn't changed. Just haven't had time to take a pressure test it and look for it or whatever. We'll get it over to uh, the car ninja when we get back. And uh, but there's always that chance. So got the 500 there, just happy smiling at me in the rearview mirror. We're headed south, uh, kind of on schedule. So it's all good. Well, I've made it to my first stop here. I'm in McKinney, Texas. Uh, it's getting a little bit overcast here. Uh, I'm glad it hadn't started raining. It's, you know, this car is so pretty and shiny and cleaned up. I hate to, I want to, it's still clean to, to deliver it. I want a customer to see it in its nice condition. You get out there on the interstates in the rain and stuff, cars on the trailer can get crashed pretty good. But, uh, so we'll be pulling in to the uh, customer's homestead here shortly. All right, we got the 500 SEL unloaded. And this is the gentleman. <laughs> Brad, what are we thinking about this guy? Two thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. We got it unloaded and awesome. me and Brad have been, we, we've spent like the last 15 minutes just going around the car talking about it. And, uh, but got it unloaded and Brad's getting ready to jump in and take its maiden drive. Yes. All right, maiden voyage here. <laughs> and these Euro cars are really long legged. They got, they got a 224 differential in them. And so, yeah, they aren't super fast out of the hole, but no. when he goes like 80 <laughs> to 120, they just roll. It's there real fast. Uh -huh. What's nice though is it's so it's so relaxed in the highway, you know what I mean? Because it's not doing many RPMs. I'm gonna have to recline my seat back here. <laughs> there we go. Hey, I gotta get into the all right, <laughs> I'm in the cruise mode. Where to, sir? <laughs> <laughs> This is pinnacle old school, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's nice, it's a big uh, evolution from the 116, but yet, so it's it's modern, but it's not so modern that it's not reliable. How do you do cruise control? Just to, just bump it up one time, just, just lift up. Push it up. That's there it, it sets. Really? Yeah, and they're like, like you go downhill, it'll, they'll kind of like surge a little bit, you know what I mean? But no, and then, and then, uh, Back to resume and forward to cancel, and then down to decelerate. Yeah, because it's all in German, isn't it? <laughs> and the cruise control never works on these cars. And lift up to accelerate, yeah, that kills it, yep. Yeah. But it's really easy just to set it, just bump it up one time. I think that, what do you think about that radio? You know, it, it's Alpine, so it's kind of European branded anyway. And then the uh, and then you can change the color to match the car, so I think it, I think it looks pretty decent for a modern radio. <laughs> what a road car, huh? Like I said, the tires are brand new. There's a there's a Uniroyal Tiger Paws, which you know Uniroyal's owned by Michelin. It's a, yep. it's the best tire you can get for this car. All my Mercedes, that's what I put on them. 
It's full of uh, 91, no ethanol. That's what's in it. But I don't imagine this car's going to sit. I'm guessing you're going to probably drive the fuel out of it. So, oh yeah. When you when you store a car, you don't want ethanol because it's really hard on the fuel systems on these old cars. Well, and it goes bad with the whole leaks. Yeah. I'm assuming car phone. No, that's, that's the alarm. alarm. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, the that's alarm. that Clifford alarm. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I, I'm guessing it's disconnected, but I, yeah, it's just. It, now it's just an old school vintage uh, thing, thing to look at, you know. And you can't remove it because, I mean, they have a hole in the wood for it, you know what I mean? So you don't really want it, you know. So I, today it's just kind of like character of the car. And then there was even a couple of air horns that they had installed under the hood. I don't know if you saw those or not. But I did see that. I, Are they working? I know. Huh? The regular horn works. So I haven't even looked at the air horn. And the steering wheel, too. That's another thing that's always bad. At the top of it, it's always worn smooth. And then what happens is there's a steel, you know, there's a steel ring that's the steering wheel with foam bonded to it. And I get calls for people looking for steering wheels all the time. You take the foam and it just moves. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it just deteriorates and it falls apart. And it's really hard to find a good steering wheel. And that's just how, you know, I mean, this car's just literally, it's the only time it's been outside is when it was moving. Yeah. <laughs> at a high rate of speed. So we had a great time. I, I love riding in the back there, Brad. You were just chauffeuring me around there. But, uh, and then we're getting ready to roll out here and you guys got me something? What do we got here? We did. So this is our signature soaps that we hand make from Indulgent Soapery Boutique. Oh, right here. Yes. Oh my goodness. With my accident. With my <laughs> accident that I bought with the driveway. So you've got cowboy, uh -huh. breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh my goodness. And it's like, tobacco, it's like my birthday. <laughs> yeah, tobacco vanilla. Wow. We have our working man scrub. Uh-huh. And then we have our grape skin mask that we make from the grape skins from Cedar Hollow Winery. Right no here kidding. In Farmersville. Oh, that's amazing. And then we have our tallow based breakfast at Tiffany lotion for Becky. Oh, that is too nice, you guys. Well, I really appreciate that. So, McKinney, Texas, everybody. Uh, I'm sure you guys ship out everything, right? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Farmersville. So, Farmersville. Oh, Farmersville. All right. Next to McKinney. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. All right. Well, is that are you, is that like a, is that a hint? I mean, hold on here. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think this might be a hint, you guys. It's a treat. It's an thank indulgence. Thank you. Thank you so this. much. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I'm going to miss this car, but I know it's in good hands. And uh, well, you know who to call if you ever need anything for it. That's yes. the good thing, right? Thank you very much, sir. Well, I'm going to get back on the road shortly. Hey. Thanks for coming. Oh, my yeah. pleasure. Thank you, guys. Right. Well, I'm back on the road. That was a lot of fun. It's fun to get to meet your customers. You know, a lot of times I just get to talk to them on the phone, so it's actually fun to meet them in person. And uh, I've had some deliveries here lately, and I mean, normally we'd never deliver uh, just for various reasons. Um, but uh, it just worked out because there's another place that I want to go and, and uh, potentially look at cars and, you know, it might... Uh, uh, might buy another vehicle. There was he had uh, a Citroen, a '52 Citroen Trucks and Avant, and uh, and I was trying to buy that car uh, from the place that we're going next, and uh, and I I bailed out on it, and uh, uh, still uh, still torn. But what's cool is he still has the car, so I'm gonna go see the car because I've never even seen one in person. So I'm gonna see it. And he he said it's on. You know he's right off 135, so it's on my way home anyway. So I'm like. Well, you know what? Let me just take the trailer up here. He said he's got lots of cool cars, and I may find something else. He definitely, he he brings the weird stuff. I mean, he's got some really rare and really unique stuff from the pictures he sent me and everything. So I'm excited to go see, go meet him and see what he's got. And uh, next stop, Medill, Oklahoma. Hang on, let's go. Whoa, check it out. This is cool. Z's everywhere. Oh, look at that white one with the stripe. The pickup. Oh, man. All right, we're here at the 240Z Guild. This is Robert. How you doing? Robert, how you doing, buddy? Good. So, this is all you here, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I can't wait to see you inside. And I spotted some Z's across the way. Yep. Whole building full of Are you kidding me? No. 
oh. all the various stages of gold. Oh, wow. Let's check it out. I'm excited to see all this. I was telling him, I was like, well, I got an empty trailer. We'd like weird stuff. Never know. Might find weird. something I can't live without. Yeah, check this out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is crazy. So, okay, walking into the showroom here. Oh, my goodness. And there, uh, I'm bittersweet about that one. <laughs> I told everybody about the, the oh, Citroën. Yeah. yeah. It looks good. It's yeah. Man, loving all the Zs. Oh, you know, I actually have a really cool vintage go-kart. Yeah. A cart like that. But, I mean, a really neat one I got out of an estate. I'll have to... So you some pictures yeah. of it. It's just sitting in my shop. I haven't done anything with it, and it's a shame. Yeah, and it's it's a neat cart. I'll have to show it to you. Oh wow! Check out the little. Uh, is that the one that uh, you had your daughter going around the lake in remote control? Oh my goodness! So cool. I've had. I love the. Uh, is this a this an anniversary car? Yep. Sweet. A ten year. Yeah, it's uh, twelve thousand original miles. No way. Man, there was one that just sold at uh, uh, Mecham down in uh, um, Monterey. Big bucks, <laughs> yeah, kind of crazy. Well, cool, this is awesome, I'll look around. So this is the car that I tried to buy on P Car Market last week from Robert. It's a 52 Citroen Traction Avant. How do we, we gotta, we gotta say it right, Avant. You know, like, you know, was it a silent T or whatever? But check this out, it is so cool. Uh, Hi, bitter. I'm jealous there. I just, I went uh, quite a bit over what I told myself I was going to do, but. Uh, Actually, the car, the car is pretty thin. It's, yeah. It's, the, the, most of them people don't spend the money they spend on that car. Really? Um, yeah. It looks, I mean, it looks great. They have like rolled on paint and stuff like that. <laughs> just do right. And then, yeah, check out the suicide doors in the front. All the paperwork, yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like somebody spent some effort on the car to make it, uh, to make it nice. Well, I don't ever wish for a, uh, uh, a bum bidder, but <laughs> you, you know, uh, you know, you got a uh, backup. What, on tell it. me about this thing here. What are we looking at here? That's a 67 Volvo Amazon. Vo Volvo, yeah. yeah. It's, and what in the world is... 625 horsepower less three car. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll, I'll it. It's built it nine, about nine years ago. So you built this? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, is it 122? Yeah, 122 Amazon. Oh my goodness. To yeah, so you built this to do what besides go fast? I raced, I raced in the Optimus series for a couple years. Oh really? Yeah. That's so cool. Man, I wish I had my 240Z for here you to look at, you know, to kind of give me the ins and outs of. Look at that. Wow. That's a running little son of a gun, isn't it? Because, I mean, geez, what are we talking about in weight here? 2,800 pounds? Yeah. Man, that's got some meat on it, too. Uh oh, it's coming to life. <laughs> wow, side pipes, check it out. Man, they just fired right up. Fuel injection. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> That looks like too much fun. Holy cow. So this is the next race car. Yeah. Wow. That looks mad. <laughs> 72 TVR. No kidding. Building it as if uh, TVR had an exotic wide body race car back in 72. So <laughs> wide body. Oh my gosh. Trying to make it look somewhat curious. That is freaking cool, but this is just a race car with a sports suit on. <laughs> 2,000 pounds. I was going to say, exactly. I was going to say, we're looking at two grand right here, yeah. 2,000 pounds right here. 540 horsepower LS6. Wow. Big massive 15 inch Woodwood brakes and <laughs> monster. You're going to need that wing. <laughs> Man, that's a, that's a pretty, it's a pretty wide little car. 
But it's yeah. pretty short. That one, uh, man. And what are we running for drivetrain in this guy? It's a LS6, 540 horse, uh, True Mech KKX, 5 speed, GTO <laughs> rear diff. Wow. Corvette C5 hub. Man, you're kind of a mad scientist back here. <laughs> you're Mad Max. Blend the blend. Testarossa. I mean, golly, that's uh, that. Uh, what year is that guy? 90. 90? Those are like the later TR wheels? 512. Or 512? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good looking car. Oh, and then this is that uh, recreation, recreation you were telling me about. So, in this one, you're building this to like a thousand horsepower? Okay, well, I'm gonna, we're going to have it turned down to about 800, but we'll be able to just bump it up as you need it with the oh controller. Oh my goodness. That is too cool. But this one's set up with the Pantera ZF transmission right. and all. And it's full chassis. It's not a donor car deal. It's a yeah. you know, legit recreation. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got a buddy of mine who has a uh, uh, one of the uh, Porsche 917 mm -hmm. recreation yeah. cars. Yeah, and it's an actual, I mean, it's built oh, yeah. to... The spec, I mean. Well, the weird thing is recreation cars are actually built better than the Yeah, well, yeah, probably just modern technology and materials yeah, and everything. Better. This, this way we're gonna tear it down, repaint it, do all that. Yeah. It's got racking, pinion, steering, and different power brakes. Wow. So. Yeah, I mean, ironically, I'm sure this thing will end up just completely, you know, having the looks of the old uh, Countach, but, yeah. but I'm sure it'll drive a whole lot better. Yeah. This is pretty right here. I like that. That one's one of my favorites. Yeah. That is nice. Little Fiat. It was yeah. a, what did you say? It was a 58? 58 miles. Wow. 2300 made. Really? Yep. Oh, over a three year period. Yeah. Wow. They're, they're a hand built and special builds division of Fiat. So, this paint here, is this like an old restoration? Yeah, nine, early 90s. Okay. Yeah, I like to see older restorations because. If, if it's a cobbled together car, usually they're showing signs by yeah. then. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah, you'll see all the shrinkage in the issues. Yeah, that this looks cool. This actually all original sheet metal car. Is it really? More than I can really buy. Man, and that's just... just redoing the bottom of it, so. Wow, so what do you do in a situation like this? Like what, how does... I had to have the windshield made in Italy, so really? it's on its way. No kidding, yeah. so they actually do that? Well, I guess they still had some kind of mold, because really? they had the specs for it. I saw, I think it was on Wheeler Dealers, I think. Uh, there's a guy in this country that like has a complete warehouse full of windshields mm -hmm. and he'll take your windshield, he'll find the windshield that oh, matches it and yeah. cut them down yeah. to, to fit it. And I yeah. forget what they made a windshield yeah, for. Laminate, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, you well, just wonder about some of these cars. These, knobs here. Um, these four knobs in the center they're, they're, you know, plastic and they get brittle yeah, right. and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, found a source in Italy that has some that are close to that. They're mm -hmm. $170 a piece. And they're old and brittle. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't even know how, how come trading anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because just the age of it. one, though. That's oh, crazy. I mean, is that something that people, like, can 3D print or something? Um, uh, yeah, I need to look into Let that. Let me do that. I'm sure. Check this, what is, what do we got here? That's a 54 flying in this. That's cool. It's getting ready to go on P car market. Is it? Yeah. Wow. The cool thing about it is it's, it's stamped parts, so there's no round tubing on it. Even it's strapped and rigged yeah. together frame. Yeah. And then the exposed tappets with the inline four cylinder. <laughs> so it sounds like an old military Jeep. Oh you know, my goodness. Drive. Oh, that it's is an awesome cool. in-town rider. Oh, can I sit on this thing? This is neat. I love, I grew up on motorcycles. I love them, you know, I haven't really, actually, I got something that you would love probably. Cause we, and you haven't seen this cause it's not on my website. I've got a 54 Cushman Eagle. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it's nice, nice right. with the leather saddle bag, yeah. the original saddle bags and everything. And uh, that, you know, what's funny is I've probably ridden that more in the last couple of years than anything else I got. Well, that was awesome meeting uh, Robert, man. He's He definitely has some unique, cool, there was a lot of stuff that he showed me, not even on, uh, that I didn't catch on camera, just, you know, only <laughs> so much to, to, you know, time I, you know, got to video or whatever. But, um, yeah, I looked around, had some neat stuff. Didn't, didn't see anything that I, that I couldn't live without other than that central one. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a fun day. Uh, really not much more. I was hoping to find something, you know, 
and uh, and make a you know double use of this trip. But uh, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, at least I'll get some good fuel mileage on the way home, and uh, and it'll be it'll be fun. So well again, appreciate you riding along. Like and subscribe. Really appreciate that. Have a great day and happy motoring.